Hello everyone, welcome back to Deep Station Gaming. Welcome back to another video, and thank you so much for all the love and support. So today, our video is going to be totally different. It's not a gameplay video, it's not an unboxing video, but it's going to be a review video of this particular device, and that is PlayStation Portal. So yes, finally I have have it in my hand after waiting for a good one month. It got launched on 15th of November, but yes, I got it a weeks back, and I am blown away with this device. People have different different mindset uh, regarding this device, but yes, I'm going to give you my my impressions, my first impressions, my reviews on it. And yes, the likeness and dislike of this particular device to be subjective. It based on people's choice and the need what they have with them. So yes, I'm going to be giving my review on it. The video and yes, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you're old, thank you so much for watching the video and do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel as well. And let's start with the review of this particular playstation so first i'm going to tell you what is this device all about so basically this playstation portal lets you play your playstation 5 games not natively but through internet over remote play on this particular device and looks wise it is exactly like dual sense controller with a tablet screen wedged between these two so if you compare with it with dual sense it's almost the same thing like this dual sense controller as you can see this is white in color this is stock dual sense which comes with playstation 5 and this device is exactly the same if you want to keep it side by side or one above the other so it looks same keys and everything are same only difference is with the joystick joysticks are a bit small in this one in playstation portal in the dual sense it's a bit bigger so people with uh, large thumbs they have to put the stick grips on this particular joystick in the same way if i compare it with the black one as well the design is almost almost what it, it's equivalent to the dual sense only but yes it's black in color that is PlayStation Portal is white in color and as of now it comes with that color itself no other colors are available or it has been launched yet by so and for your current information this device hasn't been launched in India yet and it is not as in no news from Sony India that whether it is going to be launched or not so they have uh, launched uh, PSVR 2 after 10 months of the official release worldwide so maybe next year it may come and it may not so there is no uh, concrete information on this thing and PlayStation India being PlayStation India so they keep quiet till the time the things arrive so forget about it. If I talk about the build quality and the looks wise so looks wise it's like it's a dual sense cut in half and a tablet screen has been wedged in between and it has 8 inch of LCD screen which has 60 hertz of display it's a full HD screen and to my surprise the visuals on this screen is flawless and amazing if you have a good internet or wi-fi connection the graphics looks amazing the screen quality is amazing and the brightness is also like very good this left side of the controller with d-pad this joystick the other side this keypads with the right joysticks all same buttons are there and it has a firing speakers as well as you can see what volume up down button and we have the microphone as well and we have the sony branding Plus this is a power button and the PlayStation Link button. So if you have the Pulse Explorer Buds or a new upcoming launching PlayStation headsets, it can be paired with this particular device. But yes, there is a drawback as well. It does not have any Bluetooth support, so you cannot pair your existing TWS or any other headset. Connect your devices using this 3mm jack which you have over here. You can connect their wired headset devices and there is a charging port type c cable. cable which has come with this this type c to type c cable you can use this particular cable to charge this particular device switch it on yep it's a clean playstation logo is coming up over here takes a while and booting up and yes it has opened as you can see over here the wi-fi signal is there battery signal then we have the time and over here we have this brightness airplane mode and settings i don't know why they have given this airplane mode for this thing because this is an internal device only so i don't think so there is any need for this one but i don't know there's the settings under the settings the ui is very simple there is nothing rocket science in this you have this network tab your system settings under this you have these options you can update the device as well from here and other things display and brightness if you tap on this one so this is a touchscreen device 
and touch is also very much as an effective it's not like laggy at all so yes quality wise this device is amazing as in build quality and you want to face it's very simple anyone can use it or you can check the brightness of the mute button as well it's standard as you can see this is a mute button over here this is the brightness the maximum peak brightness of this one is like this i hope it's totally visible and if i have to connect my playstation i just have to press the ps button and just look at the interface how does it come and it's just trying to connect to my playstation 5 as of now so for this you have to keep your playstation 5 turned on or in rest mode and if the playstation 5 is in rest mode you can definitely turn not turn it on through this device you just have to click on this play button and yes as you can see my playstation screen is visible now it's totally lag free if you are on a 5 gigahertz connection the device works flawlessly with 5 gigahertz connection for sure there is no doubt specification wise it has, like i said it has lcd screen that is up to 1080p with 60 hertz of refresh rate it supports wi-fi 5 and it has 4370 mAh battery which can be charged through USB-C port stop firing stereo speakers like I've told 3.5 mm jack for your headset connection over here and it supports Sony's new PlayStation Link enabled headphones for lossless audio so this is a button for the PlayStation Link if you have Pulse Explorer Buds or the new Pulse heads headsets you can connect it through it otherwise no other headset existing headsets cannot be connected even the Pulse 3D headphones cannot be connected. So this is a big drawback it has. It is, this is it what it is. So without any other delay, let me show you, let me show you the gameplay, like how the game performs on this. As you can see, you can control your entire PlayStation 5 through this. Everything is visible. You can go to media gallery. You can play the games through this. And one more thing is there, you can say it a drawback or something, I don't know, but for me it is. You cannot stream your multimedia uh, applications through this since it is not supported. Probably in future they give update and you can definitely control it, but otherwise I don't think so. As of now, it is possible. The only thing which you can do is play games through your internet connections remotely like from anywhere so this is the best part for uh, with this device you can be outside you can be away from your home you just have to keep your playstation 5 in the rest mode in order to access your ps5 games through this device now you will say one more thing that like uh, how does it help as in there are multiple ways of doing uh, uh, what do we call it uh, remote play that is through phones through tablets or anything you can use using a dual sense controller you can definitely remote play your games on the playstation 5 but like I said, it's totally subjective. If you want to get rid of of those devices and if you want to have a native dedicated device for this particular remote play, then this is the pit stop for you. And yes, uh, definitely you're getting the benefit of 1080p screen because on phones, it's not the screen is smaller as compared to this. With tablets also, the resolution would be the same. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't tried it on tablet so I cannot comment on that but with phones definitely it's a big jump playing on this thing and you're getting the best part you're getting all the features of DualSense that is you're getting the adaptive triggers you're getting the haptic feedback everything like I've tried with multiple games I tried with Spider-Man I've tried with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora then I've taken it God of War the haptics are amazing it feels same as you're playing on a dual sense control and weight wise also it's not very much heavy but yes after using for a while you will definitely feel pain in your ha palms or hands but yes if you are a pro gamer and if you are very much dedicated to gaming then definitely you're not going to count it in as in if you are very much deeply immersed in your games definitely you're not going to count it because it's been an experience with me i hardly give it a thought when I was playing games. I was totally lost in this device. Talking about the games, let me show you how the game plays on this device. As you can see, this is the main screen and I've turned the brightness completely on. The speakers are also very amazing. The output is very good, as you can see over here. Let me first give it a try with Spider-Man 2. You can hear the voice of the speaker, the sound of the speaker. It's very good. Keep it close to the microphone now. 
and let's start with the gameplay it is playing remotely so yes you will get the benefit of ps5 this does not play the games natively so yeah that is a drawback anyways let's start the gameplay Currently game is running at 60 fps in the performance RT mode or you can say the performance mode and for 1080p and if you're getting the full benefits of your PlayStation 5 in the palms that is a great deal I would say be happy with this device honestly speaking because I have Steam Deck, I have ROG Ally, I have configured GRT in that but yes you feel some loss in the connection or it keeps on dropping at times not completely but yes the main benefit is like you are getting the uh, experience, getting to experience the dual sense so basically just that you're playing it with dual sense only and the haptics and the rumbles are same as of dual sense this is taken eight And this is Avtar's Frontiers of Pandora, so this game has been launched recently, so yes, I'm gonna try this as well on my phone. I was on my bed, I was enjoying this game, it was fucking flawlessly, so I did not have to turn on my TV. So yeah, for those, like I said, it is totally subjective. For those who don't have multiple TVs in their home and they want their families to watch the TV and they want to play the game as well at the same time, so this is the best device, you can definitely go ahead with it. We do not need outsiders with it. What plan are you? You there. Come. Quickly now. Please. Feels. It hits different. It hits differently. Totally. So this is the lag experience, like how much lag is the device is getting. So for me, there's definitely no lag when you are connected to 5 gigahertz of network. So it totally works fine, flawlessly. So currently my PlayStation 5 is also on Wi-Fi zone, not the LAN wired connection. And my this device is also on Wi-Fi. So as you can see, it's working very much fine. And I have the speed of around 300 Mbps. So yeah, it works totally well. If I start a game as well, it runs pretty good, honestly speaking. So this is Spider-Man 2 once again. Let's start. As you can see, the back screen also changing at almost at the same time. So now I'm connected to my 2.4 gigahertz of internet connection. Let me connect to this one. Yes, now I'm connected to the other one. Yes, it's done. As you can see, it has connected. And let's play a game once again. Which one should I go for this time? Let's play days one. Yep, we are in the game now. Okay. 
So even on low bandwidth connection, it works pretty well. Just don't forget if you get this device, this update into the latest firmware, it has got some improvements in terms of connections as well. So you will get the good connectivity and good uh, lasting connectivity. I would say. So that's it. That's it for this particular video. That was my review and for my first impressions on PlayStation Portal. I hope you guys have liked it, loved it. If you have, then do drop a like and do subscribe to this channel. And yes, share this video with everyone because till now, no one has uploaded PlayStation Portal video on YouTube in India. So yes, I'm trying to give the best value to you guys and my review so that you can take the decisions accordingly. My last take on this would be if you are like very much PlayStation fan and if you want to have this device only then go for it otherwise there is no much of a need if you have only have any handheld Steam Deck or anything then you can configure the remote play on that device so it's not a big deal but yes if you want to have it in your collection just wait till the launch because as of now it is getting sold in the grey market for like good 30 to 40,000 rupees and in that, in that price point you will definitely get another PS5. So there is no point spending that amount of money on a remote play device that does nothing apart from playing your playstation games remotely through internet and it does not have any beefy hardware inside which can run a game natively. No point of spending so much instead of that get a series S and enjoy and enjoy the remote play on your mobile devices, tablets or any handheld devices you have, gaming handheld device to be specific. So go for that. So this is it my review, this is it for this particular video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I have got more surprises. So yes, just stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and yes, our giveaway will be announced very soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great one and happy gaming one. Bye bye, take care.